Hello everyone. Here is our next uh, chapter that is um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay. Uh, let's first see what is uh, uh, inflammation. Right. Inflammation is defined as localized redness, warmth, swelling and pain as a result of infection, irritation or injury. So it's a, it's a complex process. Uh, it's, it happens because of the complex process. Um, what happens in the inflammation? There will be redness, there will be warmth, a little bit of heat will be there. Okay, there will be swelling. Okay, and uh, person will have pain and it could be a result of uh, infection or irritation or itching okay or due to injury okay or due to injury because of accident or cut injury um, because of um, trauma uh, because of because of the pressure um, because of all these uh, there could be a possibility of redness warmth swelling and pain um, this is called as inflammation it's a complex phenomena comprising of biochemical as well as immunological factors. So many things uh, will happen here. We will um, uh, go into that in uh, detail. It's both immunological. Um, the body thinks that something has entered inside. Or it, it, it actually enters, actually bacteria or virus. They can enter from the injured, injured part and body body has to uh, fight those uh, external organisms um, that's why it is uh, uh, it it will act uh, like immunologically also there will be biochemical uh, processes inside the body to get rid of that uh, um, external um, organism it can be external it, it is also it, it can be also uh, internal the organism can um, come from inside or the uh, what is what we call as like external object you know or the body thinks that it is an external object so that can happen from inside the body also okay yeah what happens uh, in uh, inflammation right uh, sequences injury uh, initially um, injury will occur and uh, that causes release of inflammatory uh, mediators the mediators means the uh, factors uh, which cause the inflammation right those mediators will be released and uh, there will be vasodilation let's um, let's go to the uh, this picture um, here's here's your skin okay this is uh, the upper part of the uh, skin um, you, you see those cells on the on the top side right um, upper layer of the skin here is the microbe uh, it could be your uh, uh, bacteria or virus so they enter okay they enter uh, inside uh, because of the injury or because of the rupture uh, uh, on the on the top layer so just beneath those uh, um, cells uh, you can see uh, there are uh, there are soldiers uh, who who can fight these uh, um, external organisms so there are macrophage dendritic cells and mast cells Ma uh, macrophage and dendritic cells they try to engulf those uh, bacteria or viruses okay and they try to kill them okay and the and there is mast cells here mast cells what it does is it uh, it, it produces uh, and releases um, histamine okay because of the histamine what happens um, there is uh, this is the blood vessel underneath okay the this blood vessel it swells the blood vessel it swells and because of the swelling the, the permeability of the um, uh, blood vessel will increase there will be then there will be vasodilation because of water di vasodilation the blood cells they the smaller ones they um, try to go outside outside the uh, blood vessel right they, they try to penetrate uh, through the uh, through the wall of the blood vessel 
right because of all these trying to go outside okay they, because they because because the permeable permeability has increased uh, there will be kind of swelling every everyone trying to go outside okay there will be uh, there will be swelling right these are all uh, mediators of um, uh, elimination again here uh, they try inside the inside the blood uh, blood vessel from the blood also there will be um, it, as you can see a monocyte um, they engulf the organism they all try to they try to kill that organism right the antibodies are formed right so all these try to or kill the organism with that uh, with that what happens there will be a, a process uh, initiation of inflammatory um, inflammatory uh, phenomenon right uh, it, uh, the edema will happen more of water will uh, accumulate um, inside inside the body i mean the the blood it's uh, by itself it won't come out but the water from the blood can come out and that that can cause the edema ultimately it tries to kill the uh, microbe or the external organism with this what happens so let's go back a little so vasodilation increased blood flow to the affected area then increased vascular permeability leads to cellular um, infiltration right uh, then migration of phagocytic cells to inflamed area resulting into release of lytic enzymes uh, due to rupturing of the cellular lysosomal membrane these are all the mechanisms uh, um, that um, can happen when external organism it, it, it may not be only the organism like of course uh, suppose you imagine um, a nail piercing through the skin the nail will have so many bacteria right so the those bacteria also enter inside the inside the skin now it is the body mechanism that um, tries to fight those bacteria and because of that uh, inflammation uh, occurs right then uh, let's go with this uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So these are the drugs used in uh, such conditions. There are many types of inflammations. Okay, we will we'll go through them. Um, why it is called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs? Why it is like non-steroidal? There are two types of inflammatory drugs. One is uh, steroidal, another is uh, non-steroidal. Non okay, steroidal drugs they were used uh, um, a lot before but after when these new medications came uh, without uh, uh, steroidal structure um, they are more used now you, you cannot steroidal drugs for long duration of time um, it can uh, weaken the body it can um, uh, deplete the bones you know the calcium so there will be a lot of problems so you cannot take steroidal drug for a long time um, they they used to uh, use this uh, as an anti-inflammatory uh, drug before but nowadays they are not using much only in rare cases they are, they are using it okay NSAIDs uh, alternative is uh, NSAID non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug there are other types of drugs also uh, um, like they are used for the pain like um, like anal analgesics um, drugs they are called uh, narcotic drugs they are stronger than uh, stronger painkiller uh, compared to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs the drugs are like morphine codeine uh, those are they are narcotic drugs but this is a different category this is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug these are used for um, mild to moderate uh, uh, type of uh, pain um, they are going to use this all right nsaid is reduce pain as well as inflammation they both reduce pain and inflammation at local area by acting primarily on uh, peripheral system and not via uh, central nervous system so they reduce the pain okay they reduce the pain not because of the central uh, action on central nervous system it acts on a 
peripheral nervous system. You know what is peripheral nervous system? We have discussed about it. Um, they also do not produce physical dependence and have uh, no abuse ability. Like I told you before, narcotic uh, nar narcotic medicines, which we, which are used in pain uh, pain relief. Uh, they are the dependent uh, medicines. They, they cause dependence. Okay, they cause uh, dependence. That's why people uh, drug, uh, they they misuse this drug. They abuse this uh, drug. But this particular drug, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, um, it won't uh, produce uh, physical uh, dependency. They act by inhibiting biosynthesis of uh, prostaglandins uh, which are the basic uh, okay they act against uh, prostaglandins uh, prostaglandins are mediators of pain fever and inflammatory conditions so prostaglandins are the one who produce uh, uh, pain fever and inflammation it is uh, actually prostaglandin acts uh, uh, as a defensive mechanism because the defensive mechanism prostaglandin is actually trying to help us but um, in some cases there will be inflammation pain and we don't need uh, too much of this okay to prevent that we have to stop uh, this prostaglandin uh, from producing we have to block this uh, prostaglandin we will see that in the next slide uh, then prostaglandins uh, what are prostaglandins they are uh, a group of uh, cyclopentane derivative formed from polyunsaturated fatty acids and contain about 20 uh, carbon atoms. It's a long chain of uh, fatty acid. Okay, it has got 20 uh, carbon atoms. Prostaglandins are produced from arachidonic acid by enzyme cyclooxygenase, or it is also called as uh, Cox, uh, you can you can see that in here. So injury occurs, uh, tissue injury, right? Then um, uh, that produces uh, phospholipids. Okay, these phospholipids again uh, get converted to arachidonic acid. What we discussed earlier, arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid uh, will produce this uh, prostaglandin. Right, arachidonic acid from the arachidonic acid, prostaglandin will be produced. What prostaglandin will do? It will recruit inflammatory cells, it causes the inflammation, right? Then sensitize skin pain receptors, it causes the pain, right? It it uh, it sensitizes the sensitizes the skin pain. Um, it makes the body to feel pain uh, because the person has to uh, get the effect of uh, it is uh, it is trying to give the message that something has happened to the body so that's why there will be pain but uh, most of the cases there will be more pain so we have to uh, handle that i mean we have to interfere with that uh, pain that's why we are using the medicine okay then what what else it does regulate hypothalamic uh, um hypo hypothalamic uh, temperature control so it, it increases the temperature okay again it is the body mechanism to tell uh, tell us that something has happened okay the other thing um, this uh, uh, prostaglandins will do is a cytoprotective protect the gastric mucosa okay it, it will protect the gastric mucosa aid platelet aggregation okay it helps in clotting right aid platelet aggregation it protects the gastric mucosa so it is a protective mechanism here if we use more of nsaid right if we use more of nsaid what will happen this gastric mucosa will go away and there will be uh, if you take more pain medication nsaids you know that the stomach pain will start you know um, there may be chances of nausea and vomiting and diarrhea that is because of this the protection is lost that's why that is uh, going to act like that uh, also this NSAIDs should not be used much in should not should not be used uh, uh, much much uh, uh, in a bronchial bronchial conditions and in bronchial bronchial disorders right so that is because uh, arachidonic acid will produce uh, leukotrienes which produces bronchial 
conditions of course there won't be much uh, effect here because the uh, uh, NSAID is they act purely here they can also act here but one should avoid taking like ibuprofen and all in uh, asthma cases anyway um, in here is the mechanism arachidonic acid will get converted to prostaglandins okay which uh, which, which is uh, the main cause of inflammatory condition and this will be um, broken down by uh, COX. This is broken down by cyclooxygenase enzyme. Right? COX, there are there are two types of uh, enzymes, COX-1 and uh, uh, COX-2. Actually, COX-2 is very specific uh, NSAIDs. COX-2 are the newer, newer, uh, newer version of uh, or a newer generation of uh, uh, NSAIDs. Cox, nowadays, COX-2s are used more. So this is how the um, uh, NSAIDs they work. Okay, this is the mechanism of action of uh, uh, NSAIDs. All right, let's uh, go for the classification uh, next. Uh, how can we uh, classify them? We classify them depending on the um, depending on their um, uh, structure, depending on the chemical. Okay, uh, the first classification is salicylates. Um, salicylates uh, examples are aspirin and benarylate right the second one is uh, pyrazolone derivatives uh, these are examples are phenyl betazone and uh, oxyphen betazone uh, these both these drugs we are going to study phenyl betazone and uh, oxyphen betazone and phenyl betazone we are going to study with the structure the next one is uh, aryl acetic acid derivative examples are uh, Diclofenac sodium, endomethacin, and cylindac. Diclofenac sodium is um, most used after ibuprofen, right? You might have heard of this diclofenac sodium. Then aryl anthranilic acid derivatives, examples are mafenamic acid and flufenamic acid, right? Then propionic acid derivatives, examples are ibuprofen, ketoprofen and naproxen. I think ibuprofen is the most widely used um, painkiller for pain and uh, uh, inflammation and uh, the newer one is naproxen. Okay, it's better to use naproxen instead of uh, ibuprofen. Right, um, even ibuprofen in case of COVID-19, ibuprofen is not supposed to be used. There are uh, um, the COVID-19 has uh, um, increased the the severity of the COVID-19 condition has increased uh, in United Kingdom. The doctors have observed using because they used ibuprofen now worldwide. Uh, there is an appeal that not to use ibuprofen in case of uh, COVID-19. So other drugs are ketoprofen and uh, naproxen. All right. The next one is miscellaneous drugs. Examples are uh, pyroxicam and uh, um, Meloxicam. These are the newer drugs. They are used as um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This is the classification. Uh, four drugs we are going to study here. Phenylbetazone, oxyphenbetazone, indomethacin and uh, ibuprofen. Okay, the first drug uh, phenyl, uh, betazone. Uh, there is a structure. Okay, it's uh, prostaglandin. All of them are prostaglandin inhibitors. You can just write in there, you know, for the drug in the examination, it's a prostaglandin inhibitor. How how it will, how it will inhibit it by by uh, it uh, inhibits the conversion of arachidonic acid to prostaglandin using the um, from the enzyme COX cyclooxygenase enzy enzyme. So let's try to name the structure IPAC name. Uh, it's uh, 4 butyl, here is the butane, butane side chain, 4 butyl, then 1, 2, diphenyl, this is one phenyl ring, this is another phenyl ring, 1, 2, diphenyl, 3, 5, at 3 and 5 position there, there are ketone groups, right, 3, 5, and this ring is pyrazolidine, this ring is 2 nitrogen in the, um, um, 
cyclopentane ring okay pyrazolidine diode because there are two ketone rings so the name is 4 butyl 4 butyl 1 2 niphenyl 3 5 pyrazolidine diode Alright, properties um, phenyl betazone is a white or almost white crystalline powder which is practically odorless. Okay, it is insoluble in water, freely soluble in chloroform, soluble in ether, uh, yeah, they are, it is soluble in uh, organic uh, solvents, sparingly soluble in methanol, uh, less soluble in methanol. Alright, what's the storage condition to be kept in closed container and protected from light? And what's the use? Um, it is used as uh, anti-inflammatory and analgesic, right? Uh, due to its uh, toxic effects, uh, it is generally reserved for use in arthritic disorders where less toxic drugs have failed. Okay, uh, this is not uh, uh, this drug is not used um, right away i mean other other drugs are gi given preferences because because this drug has got uh, toxic effects on the body that's why this is this is a very old drug um, i don't know why they have kept this drug uh, uh, to study in detail uh, this drug and the other drug oxyphen betazone even that is also old drug um, uh, but it is uh, uh, there for you to study in the uh, syllabus in detail Okay, this is this is not first line drug. Okay, it is second line drug. If uh, first line drugs are failed, then uh, this drug can be uh, used. It is not usually employed as an analgesic and antipyretic. So it's not used as analgesic and antipyretic. It is used in special cases of uh, inflammatory conditions where other other um, medicines are. Failed. Rheumatic, it refers, refers to joint, disorders in joint. We are going to see that in detail um, in a little bit. All right, what are the preparations? Phenyl betazone, Indian pharmacopoeia, and brand names are Betacote and Betazone. So these are the two brand names mentioned here. All right, the next drug, just I can just say it's the brother of the other one, um, active metabolite of phenyl, um, phenyl betazone having similar inflammatory and uh, anti-inflammatory active, active metabolite right um, phenylbetazone it gets converted to oxyphenbetazone inside the body so that's why the, they directly made this uh, drug available oxyphenbetazone even this drug has got uh, toxic effects due to severe hematological adverse effects so uh, it has got blood related adverse effects it is not um, its use is not recommended much okay properties white to yellowish white crystalline uh, odorless powder uh, it's bitter in taste freely soluble in ethanol soluble in uh, chloroform insoluble in water uh, it dissolves uh, in dilute solutions of uh, alkali hydroxides alkali hydroxides like uh, uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, uh, potassium hydroxide Then storage condition protect from light, keep in a uh, tightly closed container like as usual, like you tell for other drugs, so same thing. Uh, then uh, its uh, uses are as an anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic drug, but uh, as we have already seen, it is not used much right because of its uh, hematological toxic effects it's used in the management of thromboplebitis what is thromboplebitis as you can see in the picture here um, you see those uh, um, the blood vessel there it is the blood vessel it's because of the clotting and because of the clotting inside uh, inflammation has taken place and that's what you see there this is called thromboplebitis and this drug is used oxyphen betazone is used in this uh, conditions so it is help, very helpful in these conditions uh, that is uh, in thromboplebitis uh, what are the preparations oxyphen betazone eye ointment so if there is uh, inflammation in the eye so uh, this, this can be used i mean um, rare cases um, 
then oxyphen bitazone tablets right and those are the preparations and brand names are uh, brand name uh, there is one brand name here that is uh, tenderil tenderil is the brand name for oxyphen bitazone and uh, let's go to the next drug endomethacin uh, here is the structure uh, IUPAC name you know you number number it like from starting from uh, nitrogen okay this is uh, heterocyclic ring it is actually um, you have one hetero heterocyclic ring and along with that you have benzene benzene ring right it's a fused uh, heterocyclic ring anyway uh, you have to start numbering from nitrogen okay the uh, there is only one hetero atom here nitrogen so you have to start numbering from there number one two three four five six seven all right you can go like this anyway uh, that is uh, not uh, uh, number eight is not that important here okay at number one you have the uh, substitution what is the substitution four chloro four fourth position of be this benzene ring this is position number one one two three four four chloro right benzoyl this is benzoyl ring okay this is benzoyl this group is benzoyl the benzene with co is benzoyl okay one four four chloro four chloro benzoyl okay that group is attached and then five methoxy five methoxy at uh, fifth position methoxy group is there two methyl two methyl second position methyl group is there indole this this ring is heterocyclic ring is indole ring okay it's indole three at third position you have acetic acid three i acetic acid the the total name is one four chloro four chloro right at one position it is attached the whole thing is attached to one position four chloro right benzoyl five methoxy two methyl indole okay three i at third position uh, which is attached acetic acid three i acetic acid all right that's the naming uh, let's go for the properties it's a pale LO2 brownish yellow crystalline odorless powder insoluble in water soluble in chloroform sparingly soluble in methanol and ether right the next is the storage kept in well closed container and protected from light the use used as um, anti-inflammatory analgesic and antipyretic it's used in gout acute gout condition rheumatic arthritis and alkalosing spondylitis so this is the gouty condition arthritic gouty condition you can see there the uh, fingers okay they are bent that is because of the arthritic condition okay what is arthritis arthritis is nothing but uh, inflammation in the joints okay inflammation in the joints are called uh, arthritis this is gouty arthritic condition because there is swelling here the, the there is swelling in the joints so it is gouty arthritic condition so this medicine indomethacin is used in a, a gouty arthritic condition so alk uh, sorry uh, rheumatic arthritis and uh, uh, let's see rheumatic arthritis See these are arthritic conditions, rheumatic arthritis, rheumatic means the surrounding area also getting inflamed because of the inflammation in the joint, right. There are, there are several types in uh, uh, even, even in the uh, rheumatic arthritis or the, in the arthritis there is osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis uh, you know there is a cartilage between uh, two two bones there is a joint in the joint right the cartilage the cartilage uh, as as person ages in the in the older older ages these cartilages uh, uh, will dissolve i mean they become thin and thin and because of this uh, there will be friction between the bones and because of that there will be inflammation and pain there it is called osteoarthritis Okay, these are the different uh, conditions of arthritis. Arthritis uh, uh, in the 
in the joint okay all of these are like joints so that's here in the knee that's the knee uh, that's in the um, joints in the uh, fingers right here uh, it's in, uh, near the neck or shoulder right uh, here uh, again again on the uh, shoulder so these are uh, uh, conditions arthritic conditions and it's also used in uh, alkylosing spondylitis as you can see um, in the in the spine the the cartilage between the between the bones uh, it, it gets dissolved because of this uh, the two bones vertebrae they join they join they sit on each other because of that there will be inflammation and pain and that is that is called alkaloising spondylitis so in all these three conditions apart from you know uh, using as uh, analgesic and antipyretic okay apart from using for pain and uh, fever it is also used in acute gout condition right then arthrit um, rheumatic arthritis and alkaloising spondylitis so these are the preparations in the methacin capsule British pharmacopoeia and Indian pharmacopoeia. Um, Indomethacin suppository, uh, it is also used uh, as a suppository, that's the that's the anal root uh, used as a suppository. Uh, Indomethacin uh, suppository uh, BP, British pharmacopoeia, and the brand name is uh, Indosil. Right, the next medication is ibuprofen. Okay, we are not studying the structure here according to the syllabus, and um, property is. Uh, white crystalline powder or odorless crystals with slight odor okay freely soluble in acetone chloroform ethanol and ether insoluble in water right it dissolves in dilute solution of alkali hydroxides and carbonates right alkali hydroxides means sodium and potassium hydroxides carb carbonates means sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate Alright, how it is stored? Kept in well closed container, right? Used in mild to moderate pain such as migraine. So it is used in migraine. Migraine is a pain, right? So in that pain condition, it is used. Post-operative pain, uh, pain after after the operation or uh, after the surgery, it is used and used in rheumatic disorders. Rheumatic uh, disorders are the uh, the uh, inflammatory condition in the joint. Okay, the, those are the uh, rheumatic disorders and uh, it's uh, used in uh, musculoskeletal or joint disorders. It's, 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 um, here it is, uh, um, here it is the inflammation, so here uh, uh, the uh, condition could be the one for the pain in the uh, musculoskeletal um, or joint disorder, pain in the joint and the musculoskeletal uh, area. All right, uh, preparation ibuprofen tablets, um, British Pharmacopoeia and uh, Indian Pharmacopoeia and brand names are uh, Brufen, uh, you know Boots Pharmaceutical, um, it is the very popular uh, uh, brand name Brufen and the other one is uh, Ibujesi, so that's the other brand name on it. All right. Um, So that's the end of this chapter. So so far, I think this this is the last chapter. And uh, let me know if it is not the last chapter. Okay, uh, according to what I have gone through, uh, this is the uh, last chapter. Um, let me know uh, in the comment section of um, uh, Google Classroom if anything more to be covered, or you can tell your um, class leader uh, Ekta. So she can um, she can tell me uh, what else uh, needs to be covered. Uh, I will also discuss with the Bala sir. The other ones are uh, uh, covered by Bala sir. And um, all right, you have a good day and uh, be safe from um, COVID-19. Don't don't go outside. Be inside. Okay, uh, and listen. Uh, obey the government government rules. Okay. Um, uh, we will fight against this uh, COVID-19. Alright, you guys have a good day. Thank you.